Rosh Kadesh IR. Welcome everyone to the services for Waymaker Messianic Jewish and Christian Center USA. We are bringing in the new Hebrew calendar month, which begins tomorrow. Uh, it is the month of IR. I Y A R. We welcome everyone that is here with us. And for those who will listen later on the archives, we pray that this is a blessing for each and every one of you. Now, as we know, um, Nisan was the first month of the biblical calendar year, but the seventh month of the civil calendar year, which um, the civil calendar year begins in the fall uh, with the month of Tishri, which usually falls uh, usually falls in September um, for the most part. So IR would be the second month of the biblical calendar year, but the eighth month of the civil year. So we will get into all of that and much more um, as we begin our services this evening. So we what we're going to discuss is the month of IR, the holidays that, that are in in this month, uh, the historical dates that occurred in this month, and then also mention um, all the Shabbats that are in this month. And we will do our scripture readings and then open it up for an altar call. Uh, prepare for uh, coming to the table of the Lord. And then we will take Holy Communion together and then close out the service for today. So before we do that, I would like to open this with the opening prayer and invite the Holy Spirit in to lead us and guide us. Avina Malkina, our Father, our King, we thank you. We thank you that you enabled us to come together and you preserved us that we are here on the brink of a new month we thank you for sustaining us that we could reach this occasion of a new month father god you are amazing we love you so much and we give you all the praise all the worship all the glory and all the honor that we can and may it always May our praise always, always, always be on our lips for you, Father God, for there is no one like you. And we thank you for all that you've done. And we ask your Holy Spirit to come guide us, lead us, direct us, show us what, what it is that you want us to receive from the message today and bless us. We bless your holy name. We Love you so much. In the mighty name of Yeshua, HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, Amen and Amen. Okay, when we talk about the month of IR, okay, um, it is, as I mentioned, the eighth month of the civil year, which starts on Tishri 1, but it is the second month of the, the ecclesiastical or the biblical calendar year, which the biblical calendar year starts on Nisan 1, which was last month. IR is, the name is Babylonian in origin. Um, of course, a lot of the, the, the names have been renamed since the Babylonian captivity. Now, the month of IR is only 29 days. It's a 29-day calendar month for the Hebrew calendar. So actually, we are beginning it on May 2nd, and it will end on May 30th. Well, actually, sundown this, sundown this evening is the start of a new day, but officially the 2nd of, of May is IR1. So we will be bringing in Rosh Kadesh Sivan at the end of this month. Um, so that is is very interesting uh, you know that we have a change over within the same month now remember we had leap year in the hebrew calendar this year so um our fall festivals our, our fall feasts will will come a little later than what they did last year as well so ir usually falls in april or may on the gregorian calendar and this year of course it is the very beginning of may in the Hebrew Bible, before the Babylonian captivity, this month was called Ziv, Z-I-V, and you'll you'll find that um, this this in actually in the Bible, the 
the name Ziv. And it's a Hebrew word that means light or glow. And it can also be interpreted as a month of blossoming. Well, we are in spring here in the United States. So things are, you know, spring is the month of life. Uh, spring springs carries the months of, of uh, life returning. Um, of course, things are growing. Um, annual flowers start blossoming. Spring is one of my favorite times because you see everything come to life and and you can be in such awe of God's creation. And it must have been amazing when he breathed all of this. He spoke all of this into existence. So we do have holidays in this month. We have um, Pesach Sheni, which... Uh, of course, is the second Passover, and we'll talk a, briefly about this and when it comes to be the, uh, the 15th of May, which is IR 14, and that is when that occurs. We will talk a little bit more about this. Um, and if you remember in, you know, it, we read this, those that are unclean that could not come into the camp, those that might have been in battle and, and had to bury a you know, someone, um, those who had maybe sacrificed and uh, could not, you know, be considered clean and for other reasons for being unclean, had to be outside the camp, could not participate um, in Passover. Um, Adonai made the second Passover. It's kind of the second chance. Um, so we will get into that Um later this month. So I just wanted to mention that is a holiday. The 18th of IR, which falls on the 19th of May, is called Lag Ba Omer, Omer. And it's the 33rd day of the Omer, basically. And and really that's a celebration, um, an outing, mind you. So um, that is a holiday. And then, of course, we have the 4th of IR. Um, which is, well, actually, the, on this calendar month, it is actually the 3rd of IR. On the 4th of May is uh, the Memorial Day, Yom Hazakaran. And then we have um, the 5th of May, which will be IR 4, will be uh, Israel's Independence Day. So those are our holidays. And then, of course, there's Jerusalem Day. On the 20, 29th of May, and it's the 28th of IR. And the 10th of IR, which falls on the 11th of May, is um, Herzl Day. And, of course, on May 30th, we have uh, our American Memorial Day as well. So we've got both the Israeli and the American, the United States' is Memorial Day in the same month. Uh, ours is at the end of the month, and Israel is at the beginning of the month. There's a lot of historical dates here. Um, this is uh, not biblical. Some of them are not biblical dates. I will let you know when it is biblical dates. Um, the first of IR in 1788 was the death of Rabbi Menachem Mendel of Vit Vit Vitebsk, and the second I of IR, um, 18. 34 is the birth of Rebbe Maharash, the fourth Kabad Rebbe. And the fourth of IR, 1165, um, Memonides survives a fierce storm at sea while fleeing from the Islamic persecution in Fez. From then on, he observed the day as a personal day of fasting and prayer. 1948, very important day, uh, Israeli Declaration of Independence. On May, Friday, May 14th in 1948 is the 5th of IR. That happened before sunset. Israel was birthed as a nation and one day uh, returned as a nation, I should say. The 7th of IR in 498 BC. Now, this is biblical history. We have Jerusalem's rebuilt. Jerusalem's rebuilt walls are dedicated nearly 88 years after their destruction by Nebuchadnezzar from the Babylonian Empire. And the 8th of IR in 1096, the Rhineland massacres of the First Crusade begins. 
On their way to the Holy Land, so small bands of knights and peasants, along with local inhabitants, the People's Crusade attacked many Jewish communities, most notably in the Rhineland of Worms and Mainz. Now, this again is in Germany. This is long before the 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 nineteen, you know, the twentieth century Holocaust. This is in ten ninety six. There was a lot of problems in Europe. Um, where the land where our ancestors were scattered to. On Shabbat 8th of Iyar, the Jews of Spire, Spire were also attacked. However, most of them were allowed refuge in the bishop's castle in neighboring towns such as Heidelberg. And then the 10th of Iyar is the death of Eli, the high priest, and his two sons, um, Twenty. 70 and 2071 BC. So, um, in the 10th of IR in 1103 AD was the death of Isaac Alfasi, and the 10th of IR in 1860, the birth of Theodore Herzl, and the 11th of IR in 1510, 1500 Jewish books were confiscated in the free city of Frankfurt. Another attack in Germany at the instigation of an apostate. Um, in 11 IR in 1881, pogroms in Wasilkow and Hanatap as Jews are blamed for the assassination of Tsar Alexander II of the Russian Empire, who was assassinated in a suicide attack, attacked by the Catholic Russified Pole, Ignacy Hernowicki. Riots continued for three years across all of Russia. And in 11 IR, 1948, the battle at the Genia, the Israeli army defeated the advancing Syrian armed forces following the shelling at the entrance of the Genia, uh, which began at sunrise and lasted nine hours. It is considered the first Israeli victory of the 1948 Arab-Israeli War. 13 of IR, 1427, the Jews were expelled from Bern, Switzerland. And of course, 14 IR, <clears throat> we have the second Passover, 1312 BC, an additional opportunity, this is when it uh, was instituted, an additional opportunity to offer the Paschal sacrifice for individuals who were impure on the main Passover holiday, and this is found in the book of Numbers chapter 9. Also, on the same date in the 2nd century BC, the death of Rabbi Meir. And then we have 1605, Jews of, uh, that had to be AD, I'm sorry, Jews of Byzantz, part of Austrian Bohemia, were massacred by Stefan Buxkai, Prince of Transylvania. And in the 14th of IR, 1933, Nazi burned thousands of books written by Jews. And the 14th of IR, 1960, Adolf Eichmann was captured in Buenos Aires. Then we go to the 15th of IR, 1727. A lot of more, you know, uh, modern day history uh, for the most part, you know, after a AD history, I should say, not BC. Um, the Jews were expelled from Ukraine by Empress Catherine the sec the, the first a few months prior to her death. In the 15th of IR, 1883, pogrom in Rostov-on-Don with the encouragement of local, of, of local Russian officials. And the 15th of IR in 1939, the Nuremberg Laws depriving Jews the right citizenships were passed by the government of Nazi Germany in 1935. In 1939, on the 16th of IR, the laws went into effect in Nazi-allied Hungary. In 1945, the same date, the Kau concentration camp was liberated by the 45th Infantry Division of the United States Army. Woohoo! And in seven, the 17 IR, in 66 AD, Jews, Jews attack and defeat the Roman garrison in Jerusalem following the theft of silver from the Holy Temple. And in 17 IR, 1793, the death of Noda Yehuda. And then also on the same date in 1945, the death of Adolf Hitler. The 18th of IR, um, 120 AD, a plague which killed 24,000 of Rabbi Akiva's disciples 
ceases. And also on the 18th, the second, second century AD, the death of Shimon bar Yochai. On the day of his death, I are 18, the 33rd day of the Omer count, Rabbi Shimon gathered his disciples and revealed many of the deepest secrets of the divine wisdom and instructed them to mark the date as the day of my joy. Um, in 1573, in the same date, the death of Moses is Surlis, who is regarded as the definitive halakhic authority for Ashkenazi, Ashkenazi Jews. Um, and then we have on the same date in 1690, indigent Jews acquitted of blood libel, avoiding the danger of the decree to destroy their synagogue. Were, were they to be found guilty? Uh, the local Jews celebrated this day as a local Purim celebration day of Thanksgiving. That same date, there's a lot going on here, uh, 1948, Israel Defense Forces were created. This is when the IDF was birthed on the 18th of IR. And in 1948, on the 18th of IR, the Horva Synagogue was captured and dynamited by the Arab Legion of Jordan. During the battle for Old Jerusalem, the synagogue was built by the group of disciples of Vilna, Gaon, who immigrated from Lithuania in 1864. The synagogue was built on the ruins of the synagogue built by Judah Gihasid and his disciples in 1700, which was destroyed by Arab mobs in 1721. It was therefore named Hervat Rabbi Judah Hakasid, the ruins of Rabbi Judah the Hakasid, or simply the Herva, the ruin. The 19th of IR, 1293, the death of Meyer of Rothenburg in his cell in Ensesheim Fortress, where he had been imprisoned for 10 years in an attempt to exact a huge ransom from the Jewish community. The money had been raised, but Rabbi Meyer refused to have himself redeemed, lest this encourage the hostage taking of other Jewish leaders. And in 1815, um, same date, the death of Menachem Mendel of Rimenov. And then 1945, the same date, Joseph Goebbels commits suicide as World War II nears its end. So now we move to the, all, this. This all happened on the 20th of IR, um, this being the year 1312. So this is, uh, this is biblical. The Israelites departed their encampment near Mount Sinai. Okay, now this is in 1288, 13 Troyes Jews were burned at the stake by the Inquisition for supposedly murdering a Christian child. The 13 Jews chosen were from among the richer members of the community. Jews were also killed in a blood libel in Neuchatel, Switzerland on this date. In 1637, Venetian Jews were forbidden the right to practice law or to act as advocates in the courts of the Republic of Venice. 1939, Mount Scopus Hospital opened on Mount Scopus, Jerusalem. The hospital designed by renowned Bahas architect Eric Mendelssohn opened as a modern 300-bed academic medical facility. In 1942, all pregnant women in Kovno Ghetto were sentenced to death by the Nazis. So there's a lot of sad history here. Um, now we move to... IR 22, in 1731, Jewish books begin to be searched for and confiscated by Giovanni Antonio Costanzi, the Vatican librarian and author of a catalog of the Vatican's Hebrew manuscripts in all the Jewish quarters throughout the papal, the, the papal states. More confiscations continued over the next 20 years. So that was already in 1731. Um, well, continuing on, I should say, that there was issues there. Um, in 1942, I'm sorry, 1944, two months after the Nazi occupation of Hungary, Nazis began deportation of Hungarian Jews to Auschwitz concentration camp, and Adolf Eichmann personally oversaw the following day the start of the extermination process. Eight days later, an estimated 100,000 had been murdered. So then we move to the 23rd of IR in 1096, the massacre of 800 Jews in Worms, Germany. 
This day was observed as a day of communal fasting and worms for centuries to come. In, okay, the 24th of IR, 1945, Nazi Germany surrenders to Allied forces. So now we're going to go to the 25th of IR. Um, in 1096, Cologne Jews were saved. Now, again, this is in Germany. Um, during the First Crusade, the Crusaders are locked out of the city in the commune of Cologne in the Rhineland, and local Jews are saved following the orders of the local bishop to close the gates to the city. In a, in a number of local provinces where the local bishop, bishop tried to avert the masses from harming the Jews, the bishop would have to escape for his own safety. Also on this date in 1355, Toledo, Toledo massacre, 1,200 Jews were massacred by an attack led by Henry II of Castile during a civil war on, on the Alcina, the Judaria of Toledo. So now we go to the 26th of IR in 942, the death of Sadia Gayon, and then in 1748, the death of Moshi Kaim, Kaim Luzato in, in a plague in Acre. And in 1945, on, on this date, the Day of Liberation and Rescue has been established as an official day to remember the date of the liberation from Nazi Germany. Um, and the 26th of IR in, in the Hebrew calendar is that it's a holiday initiated by German Zakharyevev. Gorski um, Kavkazi, Jewish philanthropist and businessman and supported by rabbis of Europe and Israel. The day was also recently accepted by the Israeli government. And also in 1945, Stat concentration was liberated by the Soviets, by Russia. Um, so in 1967, this six-day six war began also on this day. Now we go to the 28th of IR in 1967. Jerusalem is conquered during the Six-Day War. The day is marked in, in Israel as Jerusalem Day, and that is on May 29th this year. And IR 28 and 1012, the death of Samuel the prophet. Now, this is 1012 BC, um, the death of Samuel the prophet, marked by pilgrimages to his tomb on the outskirts of Jerusalem. Many Jews consider this um, a, a, a day to fast. So, um, in, in memory of Samuel the prophet, and that, that was a biblical date. So, that is the history that is involved in this month of IR a lot that happened um, and so also we've got Shabbats here we've got Shabbats uh, on Saturday um, and, and again Saturday we will also be doing Holy Communion it is Parashat Kedashim which is holy and then on the 14th we have Parashat Imor which is simply is say and then on the 21st we have Parashat Behar um, on Mount Sinai or um, some will just say on the mount and parashat Becca Kotai um, in my statutes. So there are four Shabbats this month. And of course, um, we have the Bible studies also to accompany them as well. And like I said, at the end of the month, we will also be having um, Rosh Kadesh Sivan to begin. Uh, that will begin on May 31st. And that is the end of the history piece and, and also what's going on in the month of IR. We are going to now turn it to our scripture reading for, for this service. And we're going to begin with a Shehekienu and then get into the scriptures. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam shehekienu bekimanu mehegianu lazman hazei. Blessed are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has granted us life, sustained us, and enabled us to reach this 
occasion. Amen. So we're going to go to Numbers 28. Follow me there to Numbers 28. And we're going to read about Rosh Kadesh and, and that it is an appointed time of Adonai. It is a Moedim. Rosh Kadesh, new moon. On the first of the month, you are to present to Adonai a burnt offering of two young bulls, one ram, and seven flawless male lambs a year old with three tenths of an ephah of fine flour mixed with oil as a grain offering with each bull and two tenths of an ephah of fine flour mixed with oil as a grain offering with a ram and with each lamb a tenth of an ephah of fine flour mixed with oil for a grain offering, a burnt offering as a pleasing aroma, an aroma by fire to Adonai. Their drink offering shall be purple, half a hen of wine, a third of a hen of wine per ram, and a fourth of a hen per lamb. This will be the monthly burnt offering at each new moon throughout the year. Also one male goat as a sin offering to Adonai besides the regular burnt offering is to be offered with its drink offering. And that we do not do the sacrifices, but we do honor the, the, the new moon. Uh, and the new month, the Rosh Kadesh, uh, new moon as an appointed time. So we come and we honor it and we, we do our scripture readings as well. So we're going to go also now to Psalm 81 before we read the Hallel, which is, is Psalm 113 and 118. So we're going to go to Psalm 81. Hero Israel for the music director on the guitar and the guitite lyre of Asaph. Sing for joy to God our strength. Shout to the God of Jacob, lift up a song and sound a tambourine, a sweet lyre with a heart. Blow the shofar at the new moon, at the full moon for the day of our festival, for it is a decree for Israel, an ordinance of the God of Jacob. He set it up as a testimony in Joseph. When he went throughout the land of Egypt, I heard a language I did not understand. I relieved his shoulder of the burden. His hands were set free from the basket. You pulled out in trouble, and I rescued you. I answered you from the hiding place of thunder. I tested you at the waters of Meribah, Silah. Here, my people, I will admonish you. If you would listen to me, O Israel, let there be no foreign god among you, and you shall not worship any alien god. I am Adonai, your God, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide, and I will fill it. But my people did not listen to my voice. Israel was not willing to be mine. So I gave them over to the stubbornness of their heart, to walk in their own counsels. Oh, that my people would listen to me, that Israel would walk in my ways. I would soon subdue their enemies and turn my hand against their foes. Those who hate Ed and I would cringe before him. Their time of doom would be forever, but you would be fed with the finest wheat, with honey out of a rock. Would I satisfy you? Now, also remember, you know, we're, we're going to be having uh, here in the United States, the National Day of Prayer. Um, and I am urging people, you know, if, if you haven't repented and returned back to God, this is time to do so. But we will talk about that later this week with the National Day of Prayer. Now we're going to read the Hallel, which is Psalm 113 to 118. Psalm 113, from the rising of the sun. Hallelujah. Praise, O servants of Adonai. Praise the name of Adonai. Blessed be the name of Adonai from now and forever. From the rising of the sun to its going down, the name of Adonai is to be praised. Adonai is high. Above all nations, his glory is above the heavens, who is like Adonai, our God, enthroned on high, who brings himself down to look upon heaven and upon earth. He raises the poor from the dust, lifts up the needy out of the dunghill to seat him with princes, with the princes of his people. He settles the barren woman in her home as a joyful mother of children. Hallelujah. In Psalm 114, the Passover song, when Israel came out of Egypt, Jacob's house from the people, born speaking, Judah became his sanctuary, Israel his dominion, 
the sea saw and fled, the Jordan turned back, the mountains skipped like rams, the hills like lambs. Why was it, O oh sea, that you fled? O oh Jordan, that you turned back? O oh mountains, that you skipped like rams? O oh hills, like lambs? Tremble, O oh earth, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob, who turned the rock into a pool of water, the flint into a spring of water. We have Psalm 115, bless the maker of heaven and earth, not to us, that and I, not to us, but to you, to your name, be the glory because of your love and your faithfulness. Why should the nation say, where is their God now? Our God is in the heaven. He does whatever pleases him. Their idols are silver and gold, the work of human hands. They have mouths, but cannot speak eyes but cannot see they have ears but cannot hear noses but cannot smell they have hands but cannot feel feet but cannot walk nor utter a sound with their throat those making them will become like them everyone trusting in them o israel trust in adonai he is their help and their shield o house of aaron trust in adonai he is their help and their shield o you who fear adonai trust in adonai he is their help and their shield adonai has been mindful of us he will bless he will bless the house of israel he will bless the house of aaron he will bless those who fear adonai the small together with the great may adonai increase you more and more you and your children may you be blessed by adonai maker of heaven and earth the heavens are the heavens of adonai but the earth he gave to the children of the men the dead do not praise adonai nor do any who go down into silence, but we, we will bless that and I, both now and forever. Hallelujah. Psalm 116, lift up the cup of salvation. I love Adonai, for he hears my voice, my cries, because he has turned his ear to me. I will call on him all my days. The ropes of death entangled me, and the torment, torment of Sheol found me. I found trouble and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of Adonai. Adonai saved my soul. Adonai is gracious and righteous. Yes, our God is compassionate. Adonai protects the simple-hearted. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return to your rest. My soul for Adonai has been good to you. For you delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my, free, my feet from stumbling. I will walk before Adonai in the lands of the living. Trust it even when I said I am very afflicted. Even when I said in my haste, all men are liars. How can I repay Adonai for all his bounties to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of Adonai. I will fulfill my vows to Adonai in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of Adonai is the death of his Kedashim. O oh, Adonai, surely I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your maidservant. You have freed me from my bonds. To you I will offer a sacrifice of praise and will call on the name of Adonai. I will fulfill my vows to Adonai in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of Adonai, in your midst, O Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Psalm 117. Praise him, all you nations. Praise Adonai, all you nations. Glorify him, all you peoples. For great is his loving kindness toward us. And Adonai's truth endures forever. Hallelujah. And Psalm 118. His kessed endures forever, and that can be his loving kindness or his mercy. Praise Adonai, for he is good, for his loving kindness endures forever. Oh, let Israel say, for his loving kindness endures forever. Oh, let Israel say, for his loving kindness endures forever. Oh, let the house of Aaron say, for his loving kindness endures forever. Oh, let those who fear Adonai say, for his loving kindness endures forever. Out of a tight place I called on Adonai. Adonai answered me with a spacious place. Adonai is for me. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Adonai is for me as my helper. I will see the downfall of those who hate me. It is better to take refuge in Adonai than to trust in man. It is better to take refuge in Adonai than to trust in princes. All nations surrounded me. In the name of Adonai, I cut them off. They surrounded me. Yes, all around me. In the name of Adonai, I cut them off. They swarmed around me like bees. They were extinguished like burning thorns. In the name of Adonai, I cut them off. You pushed me hard to make me fall, but Adonai helped me. 
and an ice might strength in song, and he has become my salvation. Shouts of joy and victory are in the tents of the righteous. Adonai's right hand is mighty. Adonai's right hand is lifted high. Adonai's right hand is mighty. I will not die, but live and proclaim what Adonai has done. Adonai has chastened me hard, but has not given me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness that I may enter through them and praise Adonai. This is the gate of Adonai. The righteous will enter through it. I give you thanks because you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the capstone. It is from Adonai. It is mar marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that Adonai has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hoshiana, please. Adonai, save now. We beseech you, Adonai, prosper us. Baruch of Abashem Adonai, blessed is he who comes in the name of Adonai. We bless you from the house of Adonai. Adonai is God, and he has given us light. Join the festival with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I praise you. You are my God. I exalt you. Praise Adonai, for he is good, for his loving kindness endures forever. And that is the end of our scripture reading for um, for this service. Um, we are going to close in prayer. I'm not sure if this uh, online recorder is recording or not. It appears to be, but it's stuck at, at seven minutes and 24 seconds. So I am not sure what is going on with this. I am just keeping my, uh, I am just praying that, uh, Everything that I have done um, is there because I I also record it. Um, and for those that listen much later or catch it like a week or so later, it's everything is there. Um, so we're going to close this in, in prayer and then we are going to open it to an altar call. We are going to prepare ourselves to take Holy Communion and then then also we will be taking communion and then closing out the service for today. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for this brand new month. We thank you that you've sustained us and allowed us to reach this occasion. We thank you so much for all that you've done, and we look forward to your blessings in this new month. We give you the honor, we give you the glory, and we give you the praise in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Amen and Amen. Kodesh Tov. Uh, so uh, we are going to... Uh, open up to the altar call. Yeshua is his Hebrew name, uh, and many of you call him Jesus. Same, one in the same. Yeshua is the Hebrew name, and actually his Hebrew, Hebrew name means salvation. We're going to talk about salvation here. We're going to open this up to the altar call. Salvation can only be achieved through the Lord Jesus Christ, through Yeshua. Uh, salvation is is deliverance from sin and their consequences, and our Lord took all the sins of the world with him when he laid down his life on the cross so that the world could be redeemed of sin forever. You cannot get to heaven on your own merit, on anything that you can do. Um, your family can't pray you into heaven. You can't buy your way into heaven. There is nothing that you can do. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one will come to the Father but by me. And he also explains to Nicodemus in the Gospel of John, chapter 3, um, that you must be born again, born of the Spirit and water, to enter the kingdom of heaven. And there, he also said you must be as little children to enter the kingdom of heaven. So we are children of God that are born again and saved. And you can be too if you have not ever uh, received Yeshua as your Lord and Savior. You can be born again. You can be born into the family of God. He loves you. He died for you. The world will tell you there's many paths to get to heaven. And that's a bold-faced lie. You know, the devil, the, the devil has been around for a long, long time messing with people and creating all these false beliefs and, and these fables and, and fantasies that actually look really cool and great, but actually they amount to nothing but lies. Yeshua said, there will be many on the broad path that leads to death and destruction, but the narrow path that you need to be on um, is keeping your eyes focused on Yeshua. Yeshua is 
the Messiah. He's the only Messiah. He's the Savior. He's the Lamb of God that took away the sin of the world. And he did it willingly. He did not have to leave heaven, be born um, into a body, um, and go through everything that he went through. But he does know, because he lived and walked on this earth with temptation, is because the devil tempted him as well. However, he is the word became flesh, so he knew um, how to deal with the evil one and to put him in his place and send him off. He came with a mission, and that mission was prophesied in Genesis 3.15 when um, this is after Adam and Eve had sinned and brought sin into the earth. Prior to that, they had they had communion with God every day, and they were in their glorified body. Um, God warned them that they could eat of anything but the tree of uh, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And um, in the day that they did that, they would surely die. And indeed, they did. It was a spiritual death. They lost their glorified body. Suddenly, they realized they had no clothes. Well, they were clothed by the glory of God. They didn't need to. They were completely clothed by the glory of God. So God could not reside with them because they sinned. Because sin cannot stand before a holy God. Okay? Sin can never stand before a holy God. And sin separates us from our Creator. So there was a sacrificial system that was put into place to cover that sin. Because what happened is, you know, many years later at Mount Sinai, um, God wanted to reestablish that communication, that communion with his people. He had delivered them out of Egypt, led them, um, was leading them you know, to the promised land. He had all kinds of wonderful plans for his people that he chose to have a covenant with. And, um, well, they could not stand, um, they could not stand the loud trumpeting, the, the shaking of the mountain, the smoking of the mountain. They were just so afraid they were going to die if they heard from God again. Okay. So what they did was that, well, Moses, you already have a relationship. You had the relationship. He can tell you whatever he wants us to do and we will do it. So that is how the Torah, the law came about. And the Torah was their schoolmaster until, until Yeshua came to, to once again, um, and try to reestablish all of this, but he was prophesied. Um, he was prophesied to come. Um, they, uh, what happened was there was a sacrificial system that was put in place to cover sin, but that was, uh, that was a lot of bloodshed that occurred. And, you know, the blood is very sacred to all creation, you know, to animals and humans alike. It is the life force of, of, us and um and to animals so uh you know for god to give up you know his beloved animals to sacrifice for the sins of mankind was also a sacrifice but god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting eternal life God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but through him the world could be saved those passages say a lot Jesus Yeshua gave up his place he emptied himself of his his God quality he was he's the second of the Godhead he emptied himself to come here to be born of a virgin and the Ruach of, of God was breathed into her. He was not born of the same Adamic line as we are. The Adamic line is the, the is born in the flesh and the sin. The flesh is corrupted and sin and, and flesh will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. You must be born again in order to to get into heaven. And that is only through Yeshua. That is the only way. There is no other way. 
because he came. He died once for all sin um, to the for the people that lived before him, the people that were living during his time, and for everyone that was born after his time. He took all of that on. He became cursed. He became that that cursed man on the tree. Uh, he was cursed of God. Anyone that has hanged on a tree is cursed. He took that all on for us. That is love that we can't even comprehend. But no, we can't do it ourselves. It doesn't matter, it, you know, where you are at this point. He will meet you where you are. Uh, come to him. You can be saved. You, He died for everyone. It doesn't matter what you did, where you've been. It's, it's a matter of where are you going? God gave you free will to choose. Do you choose to come to the Lord? He loves you. No matter what you have done, he's died for that. He took that on himself. He paid your sin debt in full. He paid all of our sin debts in full. Romans chapter 3 verse 23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And Romans chapter 5 verse 8 says, But God commanded his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Yeshua died for us. When you take your last breath, there's no do-over, okay? So choose this day whom you will serve, because there is a heaven and there is a hell. And the evil one will even have you believe there's all kinds of, of rhetoric out there, that there's no hell, everybody goes to heaven. No, that's not true. If you read your Bible, if you read the Bible, Jesus said there will be those that stand before him that say, Lord, Lord, did we not do this in your name? Did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not cast out demons in your name? But they were not saved. They didn't. And he said, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I don't know you. And there was gnashing of teeth and they were not permitted into heaven. Oh, this comes from the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, mind you. So, for people in man-made doctrine to say everybody's going to heaven, <laughs> who do you listen to? I would listen to Yeshua <laughs> because he doesn't lie. Okay. The evil one is in this world. There's so much deception. And, you know, there was warning. Jesus warned us in, through the Bible. The disciples warned us. And this was during their time. They said there was deception and um, deception and falsehoods gone out into the world. Can you imagine 2,000 plus years later what it's like now since, you know, Jesus has not yet returned to straighten this mess out. So it's gotten even worse. But we knew that it would. If you read the Bible, you know that it would. Uh, we would go through all kinds of trials and tribulations and um, in this world, times of sorrow, um, You'd have the days of Lot, and so as the days of this, as the days of Noah, so will be the son, the coming of the Son of Man. So um, we're not quite there, but we're getting close. Uh, no one knows the day or the hour that Yeshua will return, but He is returning. You need to be ready. If you're not ready, you're gonna be left behind. You don't want to be left behind to be part of the wrath of God. That is not what we're appointed for. God doesn't want anyone to go to hell. He loves mankind. He created mankind in his image. Okay? So he didn't create hell for mankind to go there. He created it for the devil and, and the third of the angels. Okay? That had rebelled and this is the evil that we're dealing with we're dealing with the devil and his and his deception and he will use people yes he will through demonic possession oppression you name it he will use people to deceive he whispers into the ears his demons whisper to the ears of leaders of nations it's biblical it says it in the bible the Bible is true. There is nothing uh, false about the Bible. It is 
God breathed into 40 different people over the course of 1600 years. There is no error in the Bible. Um, a lot of people want to say that because some of the things that, they, that are in the Bible they don't like. Well, actually, that's the Holy Spirit convicting you of sin. Um, and removing it is not going to change it. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. But there is good news. Yeshua died for everyone, no matter what that sin is. And you can repent. He loves you so much. He died an agonizing death. So I plead to you today, if you have not accepted him as your Lord and Savior, I don't know what you're waiting for. I don't know what me what what you think is going to happen if you're waiting for that 11th hour. Yes, he, Jesus even spoke of the parable uh, of those in the vineyard that come in the 11th hour and they got paid the same amount. So yeah, you can skate into heaven by the skin of your teeth, so to speak, but I don't know if I'd want to play Russian roulette that way because you don't know when that time will be for you. You may go to bed tonight and not wake up tomorrow. No one is promised tomorrow. So where are you going to open your eyes? In heaven or hell? Hell will be a torment day in and day out. You don't want to be there. No, you don't have to wait and clean up your act in order to, to get saved, to get born again. Come as you are. Jesus will do the rest. Yeshua will do the rest because if you love him, you will keep his commandments. You will learn his ways. Does that mean that everyone that is born again and saved is perfect? And no, not by our own rights. I mean, we are not. We are made righteous only through him. And do we mess up? Oh, there are times that we all mess up and we need to repent of our sins. And we'll talk about that too for those that are born again and saved before. That is the preparation that you must go through. And you must go through before you come to the table of the Lord. But for those who have not accepted Yeshua, not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, this is a wonderful opportunity for you to say this prayer in a, in, in a few moments. Again, the world, as we see it now, is becoming increasingly evil and it's being accepted. And that's when we know. The time is ticking closer to the time of the coming of our Lord. You know, when evil is being called good and good is being called evil, we know this world is in trouble. I do believe there is a big harvest that is begun and it will continue. Absolutely. And I believe the devil always fights, fights us hard when something is, is, is about to be a breakthrough from, from our Father in heaven. I mean, he, he hates this. He wants to take as many people. He hates humanity. So if you are serving the evil one, he hates you. Do you think he likes you? He hates you. He's been jealous of mankind since mankind was created. He wanted to be worshipped. He wanted to take over the throne of God. He got all prideful. He was also the praise and worship leader. He also guarded the throne of God. He was given, he, he was actually given a very high position. He was one of the most beautiful angels in heaven. But he got a little bit too big for himself and, and, and God thrust him. Yeah, he was thrusted out of heaven. There was a battle. Michael and his angels battled Lucifer and his. He was stripped of the name Lucifer. First of all, his name is Satan and the devil, the serpent, and everything ugly and hate, hateful is his name. And the third of the angels are, are demonic forces. They're not, they, they've lost that as well. So they were thrust out onto the earth. And I am sure Satan watched in horror as God created man in his image and then gave him authority and dominion over the earth. That would include Satan and the third of the angels. So he hates you. So if you think he's doing you favors and giving you power and greed and money, <laughs> that's only to trip you up because he's he's got a hold of you. 
and your eternal life, which will be forever, will not be good. So I wouldn't follow a defeated foe. Jesus defeated him on the cross. He ripped those keys back after Adam and Eve lost that dominion um, because he tempted Eve and Adam knew better too. The whole long story there. You'd have to go back to Genesis and read it, but this is where we are. Jesus came and he reversed the curse. So he really hates humanity because now we have that dominion and authority back and we have the authority to put him under our feet. Amen. Not in our name, but in Yeshua's name, in Jesus' name. Because Jesus is the one that did it for us. First John chapter 1, verse 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He is the only one. The only one who can do that because he's the only one who died for all of us. Lots to think about, but I don't know that I, you know, there's, you know, there's, there should be really much thought on this, you know, good versus evil. Uh, here's where we are. Um, where do you want to spend eternity? If you have never accepted Yeshua as your Lord and Savior, you can say this prayer now. Dear God, I come to you today to confess that I'm a sinner. I do totally get it. I understand that I need a Savior, and I am so grateful and thankful, Yeshua, that that Savior is you, and you did all that you did for me. I thank you for all of that, that you paid my sin debt in full, so I did not have to do that, and I'm asking you to forgive me of my sin, to cleanse me from all unrighteousness, make me whole, make me clean and help me to walk in your ways. I believe that you you came to earth. I came. I believe that you died on a cross. I believe that you were buried. I believe you resurrected. I believe that you're sitting at the right hand of the Father, and I believe that you're coming again to rule and reign. I believe you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and I declare you the Lord of my life. I'm asking you, for forgiveness. I thank you for that forgiveness, for I know that you died for my sins, and I accept the gift of salvation and the gift of eternal life. Please send your Holy Spirit to live inside me, to guide me, direct me, and lead me, and teach me your way so I can live a better life and the way that you want me to. I believe through you and you alone, Yeshua, that I am saved. I am healed by your stripes. I am delivered born free and born free and born again and I'm free from sin and the consequences of sin. I believe that I am healed and now healthy of mind, body, and soul in Yeshua, Jesus, precious, mighty, most powerful name, the name above all names, amen and amen. And if you said this prayer with me, welcome to the family of God. I am going to encourage you to get into a Bible-based church or Messianic congregation, one that teaches directly from the Bible and avoids man-made doctrine. This is where everything gets all messed up. We pull in the ways of the world, and we're not to do that. So I would encourage you to, and you might have to search for one of those uh, congregations. I, I can't guarantee that you're going to find that that immediately. So, as I said, you might have to search, but you will find that. So, I, I, am, I am certain that you will. And when you do, I would encourage you to get into a Bible study. And also, when you get into a Bible study, um, get, you know, there may be other small groups that you can get involved with. And I would encourage you to get a Bible of yourself. Uh, of your own and um, dedicate, you know, and, and, and dedicate some time to reading the Bible, getting to know the word of God prior to reading the, reading the Bible, pray to the Holy Spirit to guide you. Also develop a prayer life and start a relationship with your now heavenly father. You are now a child of God. You have a heavenly father and 
he wants a relationship with you. He doesn't care about your religion. So don't get all hung up with denominations. That's another division, another tactic of the evil one. You know, when you're born again and saved, we are all part of one body of Messiah. And Yeshua is the head. We are all part of the family of God. You're, we're all children of God. All in one big family. And there are family members all across this planet that have accepted Yeshua as their Lord and Savior and are born again. So, and they come from all, all denominations. So it, it's not going to matter in heaven because there's not going to be any of that division in heaven anyway. And we are part of one family, one body of Messiah, and a body needs to work together. You need to work as a whole. Just like the physical body, this is a spiritual body that needs to come together and unify. And what a powerful body it can be once it comes together and stops with all this doctrinal division, this denominational division. We have a job to do. And there's a lot of people that are not saved that need to get saved. And that is one of the biggest jobs that we have is to share the gospel with everyone. The gospel of the good news of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, and make disciples of all nations. Okay. So welcome to the family of God. I am going to move right into um, communion. And I just, I said we only had two opportunities for communion this week, but with that additional, um, with the, at the end of the month, we're going into the month of Sivan, there will be three in the month of May. Um, so, you know, since um, IR is a 20, no, only 29 days, and we'll be also having another uh, Rosh Kadesh service at the end of this month, there will be three opportunities for communion in the month of May. Okay, it is so important that you come to the table of the Lord with a proper attitude. And Paul actually uh, spoke to a church and he said, Therefore, those who eat this bread or drink this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself. And that means herself too, himself or herself, not discerning the Lord's body. So you really need to come in a worthy manner. And we're going to address two ways that people can, can possibly come to the Lord's Supper. One is, is um, the first type is, is the way you want to come. And these are those who examine themselves before taking the supper, the ones who examine themselves before they partake of the supper are the ones who are taking it in a worthy manner. For what are they examining themselves for? For sin. Okay. Sin cannot stand before a holy God and sin keeps us from a right relationship with the Lord. So when we examine ourselves, we are to confess it. And God has promised to forgive us and restore us to a proper fellowship with him. As we just read in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And the second way someone could come to the table of the Lord is not the way that you want to come to the table of the Lord. And it is those who are judged for not examining themselves. And this group is made up of individuals in the church who choose to come to church flippantly, not taking seriously sin that may be plaguing their lives. They might be people who, who say they've accepted Yeshua as their savior, but are living an uncommitted life. And there are those that we sometimes call Saturday or Sunday believers. And those outside the church call these people hypocrites because they're not committed to anything. There's a faction. I want to say there's a faction of, of the population through, through the generations that think, um, you know, going to church is exemplifying being a good person. And they automatically, by doing that, they go to heaven. And there are, have been people that have sat through church that are not even saved. This is why altar calls absolutely need to be happening in churches. And this is why the Lord put that on my heart um, when I started doing just even um, text teaching on, you know, when I, when I would do teaching on groups. He put it on my heart to always, 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 always do altar calls no matter what I'm doing. 
because I never know who comes across it and who may actually give their life to the Lord. And I pray that there's many that do. Um, I'll get to meet them in heaven one day. Um, if I don't meet them here, um, that is that is fine. Uh, but I always put that out there. And this is something that needs to come back in the church. You know, that altar call and the laying on of hands, the healing uh, piece that was taken out. It needs to come back. Okay, the group that comes to the table of the Lord um, and actually doesn't examine themselves, they these these are often people who, who just sit soaked in sour in the pews. And they're usually ones who will find fault in everything. Um, and also those who are really not involved in daily Bible reading or anything. Um, there are many things that separate them from God. And this type of person needs to reflect and repent before taking the Lord's Supper. This is very serious. He died for us. And to be this disrespectful uh, is, is not, there are consequences to that. The Lord will not tolerate this behavior. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord that we may not be condemned with the world the world we are to be separate from. Amen. We become a new creation in Jesus, in Yeshua, when we are born again. He makes us new. Many become weak and sickly. This type of judgment is called chastening. Those individuals who have, who have accepted Yeshua as their Savior but are not living for the Lord will be judged by the Lord. If any of you are living a life of sin and not being chastened or disciplined, um, check yourself to be sure that you're a true believer. Are you really saved? And if not, you can go back. Um, if you're listening, you can go back and you can you can say that prayer and have that assurance. The Bible says, for whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. We see many believers who call themselves Christians are in this condition. Before you involve yourself in the remember remembrance of of what Yeshua did for us, for his, his sacrifice that he gave, his life for us. Please repent, be restored and renewed. Many die and the judgment is terminal. The Bible uses the term sleep when it talks about a believer's death. And here we find that many believers die prematurely because of sin in their life. So don't let it go that far. Cut sin off at its root, for scripture tells us when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. And that's in James chapter 1, verse 15. The Corinthian church has some real problems, and the church today has many of the same problems. There are believers who come to the Lord's table without examining their lives, and they are challenging God's word. They will lose. God is going to deal with 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 this. And if you are here today and have not been examining your life for sin, I would challenge you today to examine your, your relationship with the Lord. Are you in fellowship with him? Are you keeping short accounts with him? If there is sin in your life, are you willing to confess it, turn from it, and follow the Lord more closely? Only you can make that decision. The Lord's Supper can be an experience of worship and worthiness, a time of repentance and remembrance or it can be a time of disobedience, which will result in God's ultimate discipline. So let's spend some time in prayer and self-examination before we partake in the Lord's Supper. Now, I'm going to pause this, um, and I'll tell you when I'm going to pause this, uh, when you can go collect the elements. And we're, we're going to talk about the elements of communion. Um, and um, when you go to do that, I would will encourage you to examine your heart individually and do that individual prayer as well. So we're going to talk about um, the elements of communion, and then we're also going to talk about a repentant heart. So the proper elements for the, the Lord's Supper. Um, Paul received these instructions from Yeshua regarding the supper, and he was an apostle who was accepted after 
Yeshua was crucified. And we know um, in the upper room, uh, the night of Passover is when he instituted, uh, he instituted this new covenant to his disciples. And he went through all of this. So what he used was the bread. Um, <clears throat> the bread. We're doing this in remembrance of him. He has already died and he will die. He, he has died once for all. He is not going to die over and over and over again. Um, so he has died once for your sins. And that um, we, we're doing this because he asked us to do this in remembrance of him. So the bread is used to represent the body of, of Christ Yeshua. Um, that died on the cross for our sins. He suffered many abuses on his way to the cross, and he was in rough shape on the cross. He suffered on the cross, and he gave his all for us. The cup, and the cup is used to represent the blood of Christ that he shed on the cross for our sins. The Bible says that without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin, and that is in Hebrews 9.22. Yeshua had to shed his blood for us. He knew that. And the animal sacrifices in the Old Testament were a type and shadow that looked ahead to the time when Yeshua would shed his blood for the sins of the world. And this sacrifice was the final one needed to save the world. His blood was enough for all those who accept him as their personal savior. And Paul tells us that celebrating with these elements reminds the people of the church of Yeshua's sacrifice his life. We so often and so easily forget, we often complain about small sacrifices we must make, ignoring the incredible sacrifice of Yeshua's body and blood that was made for us. So the bread, I use matzah. It does not have leaven. And, and remember, leaven is is considered sin. You know, when we, we just got off of the Feast of Unleavened Bread uh, recently, um, so it, it is indicative of sin. So, um, but now if you don't have unleavened bread, if you don't have matzah, that's okay. The Lord does know your heart. Um, also, uh, this is a representation. So, um, so even if you have a cracker, uh, that's that's okay. Um, the cup, you can use grape juice. You can use any kind of juice if that's if you don't have grape juice. The again, the Lord knows your heart. We're doing this in remembrance and reverence for what Yeshua did for us. We need to be grateful and thankful that it wasn't us that had to pay that sin debt. And he did it for us. So he asked us to do this in remembrance of him. And we will do this until he returns. Amen. Amen. Now, a repentant heart. We don't come to the table of the Lord with an attitude. Uh, remember, he died for us. We need to be reverent. And when we're asking him to... Uh, forgive us of any sin, we need to be serious about that and truly repentant. I'm going to read you Psalm 51. Um, it is an example of a repentant heart. And this was King David. He was king. Um, David, as we know from, from youth, um, he communed with the Lord. He was a sweet psalmist of Israel. He communed with the Lord daily. He had full trust in the Lord, cried out to the Lord when King Saul was after him. Whenever he was in danger, he trusted explicitly in the Lord. But there was a time in David's life when he sinned greatly. He caught the eye of Bathsheba. Bathsheba was a married woman He was who was married to one of his very faithful and loyal Soldiers, Uriah the Hittite. Well, Uriah was out off battling for David, and um, in the meantime, David actually slept with Beth Bathsheba. She became pregnant. Well, you know, um, during that time, if there was an adulterous situation, that there would have been a stoning as well. And this was the king. 
So he had sinned. He he. This was definitely a, a huge sin, um, and he sought to cover it up. So he pulled Uriah out of battle, um, in hopes that he would go home and sleep with Bathsheba. Th there had been enough time that they could pass the child off as Uriah's. So he had gotten Uriah drunk, and well, what happened is Uriah did not go. Uh, home to Bathsheba. He stayed with the soldiers that were, were back there, um, you know, around the palace because he was a loyal soldier and he didn't think it was fair that he should have these pleasures and he he stayed with the other soldiers. So baffled by this, David didn't, you know, wanted to cover this up. So he, he came up with another plan and he wrote orders for Uriah to be put in the heat of the battle where Uriah would be killed and then he would turn around and marry Bathsheba and, you know, raise the child. Well, yes, that did happen. Uriah did die, but, you know, he didn't get away with it, you know, um, and this is this is word to the wicked out there. Do you, if you think you're going to do evil things and hide your evil uh, and, and fool, you may fool the world, but you don't fool God. God sees everything. So God saw this and he sent Nathan the prophet to to rebuke David and actually, you know, let him know that I know what you've done. <clears throat> and David became so anguished and, and he he never wanted to sin against God and realize that, whoa, he did a big one here. And he was so afraid that God was going to leave him. Uh, he felt like the bones like the bones, his bones were crushed by all of this. But he also knew that he was a very rich man. He could give all of the sacrifices. He could do all of that, but it would mean nothing to God. What was most important that that he was repentant. He had a broken and contrite heart and was sorrowful, and did not ever do this again. Okay, so I'm going to read this for you. Created me a clean heart, O God, to the choir master, a psalm of David, when Nathan the prophet went to him after he had gone into Bathsheba. Now, this, this is from the English Standard Version. Have mercy on me, God, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you only, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight so that you may be justified in your words and blameless in your judgment behold i was brought forth in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me behold you delight in truth in the inward being and you teach me wisdom in the secret heart purge me with hyssop and i shall be clean wash me and i shall be whiter than snow let me hear joy and gladness let the bones that you've broken rejoice hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities, create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a bright spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take me, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O oh God. O oh God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your righteousness. O oh Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. For you will not delay in sacrifice, or I would give it. You will not be pleased with a burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O oh God, you will not despise. Do good design in your good pleasure. Build up the walls of Jerusalem. Then will you delight in right sacrifices and burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings and then bulls will be offered on your altar and that is a an example of a contrite heart so i'm going to pause it now for you to get um, the elements uh, for communion and i'm going to suggest that you take this time with the lord also before you come back and then we will take it together so i'm going to pause it now And we are back and hopefully ready to take communion.
Please bow your head of prayer with me now. Avina Malkino, our Father, our King, we come to this table as your guests, resting only in the worthiness of your Son. As we look upon the emblems of our Savior's death, may we remember why he died. Because of all of us, to cleanse and to heal, to satisfy your righteousness and justice, to blot out sin, to cast it out. And we remember his eternal love and boundless grace. May we receive the assurance of forgiveness, eternal life, and the hope of glory as the cup as the bread and the cup nourish our body, so may your indwelling Holy Spirit, your Ruach HaKadash, strengthen our soul until the day of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ appearing, when we will hunger and thirst no more, and we will sit with him at, heaven, at his heavenly table. Yeshua, we thank you for all that you have done, for the huge, huge sacrifice of your life, because we could not do it on our own. You knew that. We thank you for providing us a way of redemption through the remission, the remission of our sins through your blood, through your shed blood. There could be no other way. But you gave of yourself. We thank you so much. We love you. We worship you. We adore you. You are the King of Kings. You are the Lord of Lords forever and ever. In Yeshua, Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. Say with me now the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The bread. Go ahead and take that bread and hold it in your hands. The Lord Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. This is a symbol of the body, a representation of the body that was broken for you. Take and eat. The cup. Take, take the cup into your hand at this, at this time. This is a representation of the blood that was shed for you, the blood of Yeshua. This is a symbol. And what we're doing to remember Yeshua. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Take and drink. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you so much. We thank you for the gift of Yeshua, of Jesus. And we thank you that you loved humanity so much that you gave your only, your only begotten son to take our sin penalty. And we thank you, Yeshua, that you took it for us, that we may have eternal life. We do this in remembrance of you. As you have asked us, we honor you. We worship you. We give you the glory and all the praise because it belongs to you. You are the only one that it belongs to you. And it belongs to you. You're the only one it belongs to. No one, no one could redeem themselves and you knew that. And you took it all on yourself and we thank you so much. We thank you. And we worship you forever and ever as our King of kings and our Lord of lords. In the mighty name, the name above all names, we proclaim Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Amen and Amen.
And now may you walk in the light as he is in the light. May you have fellowship with one another. For the blood of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. And now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Adonai spoke to Moses, telling Moses to speak to Aaron and to his sons. He wanted to place his name upon Benaiah Israel, the children of Israel, and give them his blessing, and he gave them specific words. This is found in Numbers chapter 6, verses 22 to 27. If you are the natural branch, or if you are grafted in, if you're born again into the family of God, you are part of this blessing. You are you are a child of God, and when you are born again, he puts his name on you and seals you with his Holy Spirit. So this blessing is for each and every one of you. And I'm going to say it first in Hebrew, and then I will say it in English. Shalom. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Shalom. Amen and amen. Well, Shavuot Tov, everyone. Have a good week. I hope to see some of you um, at the Bible study um, or also uh, we, we are having the Bible study and we're also meeting live in real time Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. on our free conference call.com channel. Um, we meet live in real time every week. Um, again, uh, we, there's other opportunities this week. We have the National Day of Prayer on Thursday, May 5th. Um, also, just to, um, to remember, um, we have uh, two important dates this week, the Israeli Memorial Day on May 4th, and also on the same day of our uh, the United States National Day of Prayer is the Israeli Independence Day. So, very busy month. Um, also, in the month of May. Um, so, God bless each and every one of you. And um, have a good week.